27, 28, 30, 32. Let's see if we can make it up this hill with this scooter. And this is after riding, what, 11 miles on this battery charge? Look at that, guys, right up at no problem. That's crazy. Hey, what's going on, everyone? As you can see, this scooter is super quick. I was able to get it up to 32 miles per hour in this short parking lot here, and it would probably go the max speed of 40 that it's rated for if I had a longer stretch, which we might try out later. So this is the brand new 2023 Varla Eagle One 2.0. And I gotta tell you guys, there is so many new upgrades on this scooter compared to the original Eagle One that I reviewed about two years ago now. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you going and watching it. I made a few different videos on that scooter and I'll put the links down below for you to check out. But this thing has some major upgrades over the original one. And I, I almost would have called it a brand new scooter instead of just the 2.0 because I mean everything from the stem latch to the bigger battery to the display I mean everything just seems so much nicer on this one versus the original 1.0 but let's get into all the specs features and details of it gonna try this thing out on some jumps and see what the suspension's like now this is the same as their old model uh, 52 volt dual 1000 watt motors and I gotta tell you, this thing gets up and goes pretty good, just like their original one. So let's get into it, guys. If you found this video interesting and helpful, please let me know down in the comments, and I will put affiliate links down below in the description, as well as some coupon codes if I can get them, uh, for you guys to save a few bucks if you're interested in picking one of these up. But let's get into it and see what it's all about. So first and foremost, right off the bat, the first thing that I love that is way better than their original model is the way that this front stem latch now secures the stem of this scooter. This stem's a lot thicker and seems a lot heavier duty than the original Eagle One. It has a safety pin here that goes in the side as well as this turn knob here that allows you to easily uh, undo these handlebars and fold them down. And there's also an included deck latch on this model here, nice and heavy duty, with a deck latch hook here that comes included on the scooter. On their original version, you had to buy that separately, but it's really nice that they have this one on here and this can double as a bag hook too. You can clip a bag on here and carry a bag around on that hook if you need to. Now there is a little magnet behind here to keep this thing up against there so it doesn't rattle, but I found that that magnet's really weak. So I put a piece of uh, Velcro on here just to keep that thing from rattling while I'm riding but you really don't need to, but I wanted to eliminate the little bit of noise that it may make. So up here on the handlebars, you have a nice set of rubber locking grips, double locking on both sides. Next to that, you have your control pad for controlling your pedal assist levels, which there are five of those, one through five. Now you can go ahead in the settings and change that to have either three levels of assist or five. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at five because I like the different speeds that it gives you. So it's rated to go six miles an hour in one, 15 in two, 21 in three, 31 in four, and 40 when you're in, oh, I, call, I keep calling it pedal assist, but it's not pedal assist level. It is PAS five. That's your max speed at 40 miles an hour. We'll test out these different speeds of each level when we get down on a straighter stretch, but it's really nice up here on the handlebars. You have a thumb throttle instead of the trigger throttle, and this display is a lot bigger and easier to see, in my opinion, than the little display that was on the original Eagle One. Plus, I just like this one a little bit better being in the center here. Now, it is a little bit hard to see when it's bright and sunny out, but I still think that it's nice there being in the center and a lot bigger. Over here on the right-hand side, you have a cheap bell, which I would recommend upgrading that to one that holds an AirTag. And it has a set of Varla branded Zoom hydraulic disc brakes coming down to 160 millimeter rotors in both the front and the rear of the scooter. And what's awesome about this scooter is it's sitting on a pair of 10 inch tubeless tires that are almost like fat tires. They're really wide, which is really nice. They're really comfortable being tubeless. It gives you a lot of cushion along with the dual suspension. And it has a hydraulic over spring suspension in the front and in the rear of the scooter. Now I'm pretty sure they're both hydraulic spring. The back one does say hydraulic spring on it and the front one looks pretty similar. So I would say they were both hydraulic spring suspensions. And they do seem a little bit beefier than the original Eagle One. Let me show you here on some of the jumps that I tested it out on. All right, now we're gonna try out the suspension. Very, very smooth. 
and it definitely feels a lot smoother than the original Eagle One. I feel like the original Eagle One bottomed out a lot easier than this thing. I haven't even felt it bottom out yet. Even when I went off of that bigger jump, I hit just on the back wheel and still didn't bottom out, and that's with 175 pounds on it. So very nice. All right, as you can see, it did really well on those jumps. I hit the same jump whenever I had the Varley Eagle One, and it bottomed out a little bit easier than this one, in my opinion, and I could probably adjust the suspension to make it tighter. However, I normally don't go off jumps like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it where it's at because it's really smooth when you're jumping off curbs and things like that, the way it's set with my weight of 175 pounds. So up here on the front of the scooter, it has a nice big headlight up front in the middle. What's nice about that is that when you turn the handlebars, the light turns as well so you can see where you're going. The old Eagle One had the lights down below, which really didn't do too much in my opinion. It was able to make you noticeable at night and people able to see you, but for you being able to see in front of you while you were driving wasn't very good in my opinion. And what's awesome is this has a set of lights down the side, has a set of rear lights and brake lights. So when you pull the brake lever, oops, the scooter just shut off. Let me turn it back on. So let me show you this. This scooter does come with an NFC unlock. When you turn it on, it will not come on unless you have this NFC card here and tap the screen with it. Now it says in the manual, there's a way to connect it to a phone, but it said it didn't work with Apple. I couldn't get it to work with my iPhone. I tried my way Android and could not figure out for the life of me how to link it to unlock this thing with a phone. So if any of you know how to do that, please put it down in the comments and let me know if you figure it out because I couldn't figure it out. So I'm going to have to use this card every time I unlock and turn this scooter on. So to turn it on, you just hit the button here and you'll see the NFC thing come on. You just tap the screen here with the card and then it comes on. Now that's going to be really nice for anti-theft. Nobody's going to be able to hop on and steal your scooter unless they carry it away, but they won't just be able to turn it on and ride away with it. So it's kind of nice. But if you lose your card, then well, then you're gonna be stranded too. So to turn the lights on on this scooter, you hold this button down here, which turns the headlight on. But to turn the side lights on, you have to hold the down button down for a few seconds. And then you'll see the side lights come on. And then you hit the headlight button and it will cycle through the different modes. You have that flashing mode there. You have that mode, which is actually more flashing than the last one. And then you have off. So the only color that is solid is kind of like a bluish white color there. It would have been nice if you could have changed it to any of the other colors that you see here, but you cannot as far as I know. So you do have a few different options and modes though. I'm probably just gonna leave it on this steady one here. So in the back here, you could see that when the lights are on, this is a very dim light. If it was nighttime, you'd be able to see it. And when you pull the brake lever, you do have a set of brake lights there, which is really nice to see. On this model, the fenders are plastic, just like on their other one, but they do seem a lot heavier duty and less bounce on these ones. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think the front and rear arms are a little bit longer, which makes this for a little bit of a smoother ride. However, one thing I do want to note is the deck on this from here to here is about two and three quarter inches shorter than the original Eagle One. And I think that's because the way this is welded on here, on the older model, it more or less came off the back. And on this one, it's welded to the deck. So it's about this much shorter than the old Eagle One. And some of you might notice that if you've ever ridden the original one, it was nice having that longer deck. However, you do have this foot platform on the back here so you can get your back foot back a little bit further, which is what I recommend anyway, because this thing is powerful and you'll want your foot back there to keep it from throwing you off. Now the cable management on this is really nice. During assembly, it was pretty easy. The only thing I really had to do was put the handlebars on, check the tire pressure, and go over all the nuts and bolts on the whole scooter and make sure they were tight. Now, when I mounted this headlight on here, I was able to mount the wires down through here to keep them nice and clean looking. Everything is wrapped really well coming down into here. Right here, you have dual charge ports for two chargers. If you wanted to do a fast charge, you can hook one up to each, or you could just use one charger. And the scooter does only come with one charger. So it will take a little bit of time to charge up this 20.8 amp hour battery. But what's nice is the old version was, I believe, 18.2 amp hours and this is 20.8 so it's over 2.5 or 2.6 amp hours bigger than the older model which should get you a lot more range than the old model and one nice upgrade over the old model is on the old model the motor wire come down underneath the frame and if you watch my flat repair video you'll actually see that i recommended changing that wire to go up over the frame like this on the older model you had a chance of pinching that motor wire and shearing it off well on this model they either seen my video or just 
designed it a little better to where it comes up over top so you don't have to worry about anything hitting it and shearing it off underneath here so that's a really nice improvement to see whether or not it was because they seen my video or just decided to do it either way it's a nice improvement and for the weight of this scooter for those of you that you think are going to pick it up and carry it up a flight of steps it does weigh 82 pounds so this is by no means a light scooter it weighs just as much if not more than some big e-bikes so just keep that in mind it is going to be a little cumbersome to carry if you had to but very nice that they give you that included deck latch and you can carry it if you wanted to now there is a set of red reflectors on the front like the back but there is no lights in there that would have been nice to see some flashing lights or some lights in there that just lit up for a little bit of extra safety but i'm not gonna lie i do like the lights down the side it makes it really nice for people to see you from the side in the evenings and like i said before this thing is powered by two 1000 watt motors you could put it in single motor mode and use either just the back motor or dual motor mode and use both now honestly just like on their older model i would just recommend just keeping it in dual motor mode even if you didn't use the full power of it just keep it in dual motor mode it's going to put less strain on one single motor because you're using both even if you're going at slow speeds that's just my opinion as far as you getting more mileage using the single motor mode i don't know maybe you will maybe you won't because you'd be pushing one motor more than if you had it in dual motor mode pushing two motors uh, less if you know what I mean and the scooter shut off again so I got to turn it on one more time here and when you look at this little icon right up here on the screen that's your dual motor mode and to put it in single motor you hold the plus arrow down until that little diagram disappears which is next to your percentage and now it is in single motor mode then you hold the up button again and that turns dual motor mode back on. On the old version, they had a switch to do either single or dual motor, and then a button for turbo and standard mode. And for the life of me, I had to label them because I always mixed them up, never knew which mode was turbo or which mode was standard or dual motor, single motor. I always got confused on that because it wasn't really labeled clearly. So pretty easy and self-explanatory here on this one. The only difference is you really don't have a turbo and eco mode basically you just turn down your pas levels and that will tone down your speed and power and i do want to disclose that they did send me this for testing and review and at the time of me filming this i don't know exactly what the price is going to be but like i said i'll leave a link down below where you can go check out the current pricing of this as well as any coupon codes but the main things that i think that i'm really really happy for that got upgraded on this was the stem latch because i always hated the stem latch on the older model i even bought the uh, additional one that you could put on there that was a lot heavier duty but it seemed like that thing would constantly come loose and you constantly had to fumble with it keeping it tight and just seems like this one's just such a better design overall and the 2.6 amp hour battery and the ease of adjustment settings just seems a lot better in my opinion so that's enough about the scooter for now that's the main specs and details of it but let's get on this thing take it for a nice long ride and see how it performs overall all right so now i'm going to show you how fast the scooter picks up on speed now this comes factory set with the p06 setting set to one which is the lowest amount of power that you're going to get from your start now in the manual it states do not adjust this setting so do this at your own risk i'm just showing you this here just to show you the performance of this scooter now, I don't know if adjusting it to five would cause any problems with the scooter or if it's just a safety thing, but just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna start over on that line and run across until we hit this other line in the parking lot. And I'll show you the difference in pickup on speed. Now, I noticed when I first got on this thing and tried it out, I felt like it was a lot less powerful than the original Varla Eagle One. But after I adjusted that setting, it was very similar. So here we go. This is as fast as the pickup will be on PAS5 with the P06 setting set to one. Done. Now, once you get up to speed, it goes pretty good. It's just that initial takeoff is not that powerful when set to one. And that's how it comes with the factory settings. Now let's try P06 set at five and see what kind of pickup it has. Front tire spun and done. And you can see how much faster that is when it's in p05 it actually spins the front wheel just like on the varla eagle one when you're set in turbo dual motor mode and i'll show you this regenerative braking here so i'm just going to tap the brakes and the regen kicked in slowing me down nicely now i do have it set to the max regen and like i said earlier when you hit 
below like 12 or 14 miles an hour, you'll feel that it disengages. But we're gonna go up this hill. This is the hill that I go up in all my tests on e-bikes with just throttle only and see what kind of speed we can maintain. So let's bump it up to five here, the max, and see what it'll do. Now my, my fastest, most powerful e-bike up this hill, I believe it was 11 miles per hour. So we'll see what this will do. This crushes any e-bike up hills, 22 miles an hour, 21. So never dropped below 21 miles an hour coming up that hill. That's just insane. Now I do have the cruise control turned on on this just to see how I like it. You can go in the settings and turn the cruise on or off, which is really nice in my opinion. I hate when e-bikes come with it set to on and that's the default mode and you cannot change it. That's nice that you could turn this off if you do not want the cruise control to be on. So when you have the cruise control set, if you hold the throttle steady for about 10 seconds, it will engage cruise control. And to disengage it, you just hit a brake lever or hit the throttle. Or if you change the PAS mode, it will also disengage your cruise control. It looks like the speedometer is fairly accurate. And this is with just regen. I don't really see any uh, thing on the screen that shows you it's regening, but you could definitely feel it. Now I do have it turned up to the max on the regen and it is pretty hard, it does seem pretty harsh here. But when you're going fast, you kind of need it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try out a different levels here. Six miles an hour in one. Whew, picks up pretty good. 16 and two. Twenty and three. And looks like they're doing some work up here. So 30 miles an hour easily, 28, 29, and I'm gonna start slowing. I'm probably gonna go ahead and turn that cruise control off. I don't know if you guys realize how hard this is to video on a scooter, because you can't ride one handed like you can on an e-bike. <laughs> So I'm trying to do this as safe as possible while still getting you some good footage to view. I'm telling you, that regen braking is powerful. When you're only going like 20 miles an hour, you could really feel it kick in. Don't even really have to get into the, the standard brakes, to be honest. So we're gonna see how it does at the bottom of this hill. I should have a pretty good speed going by then. I don't want to go too fast because I'm not really hanging on here too good with the one hand. All right, just going to, I'm just in the regen braking right now, slowing down here. Not even in the regular brakes yet. Whew. So if I had to hit the brakes harder there at the bottom because I was just below 14 miles an hour, but really good there, guys, on the regen braking. Love that feature. Not even so much for regaining battery power as I stated in almost all my other videos that I did regen videos on, on uh, either e-bikes or scooters, but I just love the fact that you don't have to use the brakes as much and wear down your brake pads. Nice on the bumps. I wasn't recording. Are you serious? Yeah. All right, we're coming up here on a straight stretch, so I'm gonna do the best I can at trying to get a max speed. 
But to be honest, guys, I don't like going fat, too fast on these scooters. The older I get, the more cautious I get. So let's try four first and see what kind of speed we can hit. Looks like 30, almost, yeah, 30 miles an hour with four. And we're gonna wait till I get down here on a different stretch. I don't want nothing running out in front of me. And we'll see what five is. And one thing I wanna note is they do mention not to switch from single to dual motor while you're riding. Twenty nine, thirty, thirty two, thirty three, thirty, thirty two. I'm starting to hit uphill now. So I was able to hit thirty to thirty one and three, and only able to hit thirty three there in five. Uh, so maybe on like a really long stretch, you might be able to hit forty, but I don't know. I think forty might be might be a little bit of a uh, far stretch there for this thing to go. All right, guys, quick update. Varla sent me an email stating that the first batch of these shipped came with the speed limited and the P07 setting it came set at 65. Now, I thought it was maxed out because it said in the manual that the max was 65, and I was assuming that was 65 kilometers per hour, which is 40 miles per hour. However, they said you have to go in and change that to 80 in the p07 setting to unlock the speed so we're going to try this again here in this parking lot and see what kind of speed we can get to if we can get to above 32 or 33 miles an hour that i was able to get to before but the battery is down to about 51 volts right now so i may not hit that speed yeah i was only able to get the 28 there let's try again let me start from down this far end and go the other way I may not have enough straight stretch here to hit max speed, but and I may have to try this again another day with a fully charged battery. So I was able to hit 31 there, but that's not with a fully charged battery. So not sure if that made a difference or not. I'll let you guys know and update you down in the comments after I try it again with a full battery. So please check that out down below to see if it'll hit closer to 40 miles per hour. But I'm only able to still get it to about 31, 32. And uh, like I said, that's with the battery being under 50% because it's at about 51 volts. Now I did notice on the display, it still shows about 70% charge which there's no way that could be accurate with it being at 50 to 51 volts. Uh, it's a 52 volt system and 58 volts when it's fully charged. All right, let's get back to the video. Let's try single motor mode just to see what it'll do. So I'm gonna hold the up button down to get it in single motor mode and see what it'll do in pedal assist five going the other way. And maybe we'll turn around again and do dual motor one more time and see if we can get up a little faster. But I really don't like going those speeds, guys. If something runs out in front of you, you're done. This thing's still quick in single motor mode. Twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. So at least thirty to thirty one miles an hour in single motor mode. I'm gonna go ahead and bump it back up in the dual and try it one more time going the other way. All right, it's the last speed test and my battery voltage is not fully charged. But let's see what we can do here. 31, 33. And starting uphill again. So 33 is the fastest I'm able to get it to right now. And honestly, like I said before, I don't really feel comfortable pushing it past that speed to begin with unless I'm in full gear. Uh, even these speeds are a little sketchy without having full padding on and leather jacket, full face helmet. So I definitely recommend you wearing your uh, safety gear if you're going top speed on this scooter. So right now my battery under load is down to 50.7 volts. It's about 53.5 volts when it's not under load out of 58.8 so if i had a fully charged battery 
I'd probably be able to get up to a higher speed. This is uphill, still maintaining 29, 30 miles an hour easily up this slight incline. Very nice speed there. Hitting these bumps, nice and smooth. You can actually bunny hop over some of them too. Off the curb so smooth let's go back up on it hop up it a little bit all right guys so now we're approaching the steepest hill in my town and you're gonna see this thing will rip right up this hill at way faster speeds than any e-bike I have. Most of the e-bikes I have won't make it up unless you help pedal up it. All right, here we go. This thing though, gonna make it up no problem. It, I don't know why they can't make e-bikes with this kind of power to go up it this fast. I mean, these wheels are so small also, maybe that has something to do with it, but 18 miles an hour up that hill, no problem at all. All right, last long hill before my house. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain up this. Now I would say my battery's probably somewhere around half right now. And I'm able to hit 21 miles an hour going up this hill. Like I said, crushes any e-bike speed that I have, which is insane. So we're just gonna keep it full throttle here, see what it maintains, 25, 24, and the speedometer is pretty accurate. Right now it's showing 26 on the scooter, 25 and 23. So it's within a mile or two, mile per hour or two on. And we're at the top of the hill. So not bad to maintain 20 some miles an hour up that hill. 32. And I'm gonna take it easy down through here because I don't need no deer running out in front of me. And then we'll hit the last hill, the one that I came up in the beginning of this video. All right, here's the hill that we went up in the beginning of this video. Gonna hit it one more last time here and see what kind of speed we can maintain. 24, 22, 21, 20. So drop to 20 miles an hour and that's after, let's see how much I have on this trip. Looks like 8.5 miles on the trip, but I have about 12 miles total on this battery charge. It says 8.3 miles on the GPS, and on this trip it shows 8.6 on the scooter. So it's reading just slightly high with both the speedometer and the odometer, but pretty close, accurate enough for me. out of curiosity let's try the big grassy hill that I did my one e-bike test on hopefully it's not all muddy down here stay on this side here because it looks a little wet over there all right and I started out on my e-bikes at this post right here and let's see if we can make it up this hill with this scooter and this is after riding what 11 miles on this battery charge look at that guys right up at no problem that's crazy all right, everyone, I made it back home safe and sound. As you can see, the max speed I was able to hit was 33 miles per hour. But like I said, if I had a longer straight stretch and a fully charged battery, I may have gotten well past that. But to be honest, like I said before, don't feel comfortable going really past that speed anyway without being all geared up. But overall, did really great on the test ride here. You could see it cruised up all those hills that even some of my e-bikes have a hard time making it up. Went up all those super quick and easy. Even the steep grassy hill test there at the end, I couldn't believe it went up that, that easy. But very smooth ride, very nice upgrades over the Varla Eagle 1, I guess 1.0 you would call it. And if you guys are interested in picking one of these up, like I said before, I'll leave an affiliate link down below, as well as coupon codes where you can save a few bucks or if you just want to check it out, see all the specs and details on it. 
Let me know if you have any questions and please leave a comment down below because it really helps my channel out and consider subscribing if you like this content and I will see you all around on the next one. Thanks for watching everyone. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here real quick. This is the next day. I rode this scooter until the battery got down to 0%. And it's at 41.6 volts sitting here at an idle right now. And I was able to get 28 miles out of that charge. Now that's with me having the settings turned up, riding it really hard, trying to do a bunch of max speeds and testing it out, uphills and everything like that. On average though, you should get at least that if you're 175 pounds like I am. And I might get more range out of it once I cycle the battery few, a few times and let those cells balance as well. You may get more range out of it. You may get less depending on your riding depending on if you're on level ground or a bunch of hills like I have. But like I said, I had the settings turned up so it was using more power than normal.